Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Coffee and the Word. I am having some uh, English breakfast tea this morning. Oh, good stuff. Been staying away from coffee, just uh, some of the flavored coffees that I've been drinking have sugar in it, but I did have some Maxwell House. Remember Maxwell House tagline, good to the last drop? It was pretty good. Had that at work yesterday. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray you're all doing well this morning. It's Wednesday, September the 1st. Can you believe it's September already? Wow. Oh, let's, the, let's see. This morning, we're once again reading in Psalm 106, the three different readings there. And then we're going to Deuteronomy, and then we have a reading in the Gospel of Mark. So, let's get going. Psalm 106 Verses 1 through 6, 13 through 23, and 47 and 48. So here we go. As always, may God bless the reading of His Word. Praise the Lord. O give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For His steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord, or declare all His praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you save them, that I may look upon the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. Both we and our fathers have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedness. But they soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but they had a wanton craving in the wilderness and put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but sent a wasting disease among them. When men in the camp were jealous of Moses and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord, the earth opened up and swallowed, and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. Fire also broke out in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a chaff in Horeb and worshipped a metal image. They exchange the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Next, we're going to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 21 through 40. Oh. All right. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me because of you, and he swore that I should not cross the Jordan, and that I should not enter the good land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. For I must die in this land. I must not go over the Jordan, but you shall go over and take possession of that good land. Take care, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make a carved image the form of anything that the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you father children and children's children and have grown old in the land, if you act corruptly by making a carved image in the form of anything and by doing what is evil in the sight of the Lord your God so as to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that you will soon utterly perish from the land that you, that you are going over the Jordan to possess. You will not live long in it, but will be utterly destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods of wood and stone, the work of human hands, that neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him, if you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in tribulation, and all these things come upon you in the latter days, 
you will return to the Lord your God and obey his voice. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not leave you or destroy you or forget the covenant with your fathers that he swore to them. For ask now as the for ask now as the days are past which which were before you since the day that God created man on the earth and ask from one end of heaven to the other whether such a great thing as this has ever happened or was ever heard of did any people ever hear the voice of a god speaking out of the midst of the fire as you have heard and still live or has any god ever attempted to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation, by trials, by signs, by wonders, and by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by great deeds of terror, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. To you it, it was shown that you might know that the Lord is God. There is no other besides him. <clears throat> Out of heaven he let you hear his voice, that he might discipline you, and, and on earth he let you see his great fire, and you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved your fathers and chose their offspring after them, and brought you out of Egypt with his own presence by his great power, driving out before, before you nations greater and mightier than you to bring you in, to give you their land for an inheritance as it is this day, Know therefore today, and lay it up, lay it, lay it to your heart, that the Lord is God in heaven, above and on the earth beneath, there is no other. Therefore you shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today, that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all time. All right. Oh, that's good stuff. Uh, next, we're going to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 9 through 23. And here we go. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For, for from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these, th all these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. And this is the word of the Lord. Next we'll go to the Pray Now app. And I'll read the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your servant Joshua led the children of Israel through the waters of the Jordan River into a land flowing with milk and honey. As our Joshua, lead us, we pray, through the waters of our baptism into the promised land of, your, of our eternal home where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. <clears throat> The prayer had mentioned Joshua, and I know we all know who Joshua is, but uh, I'd like to read this little paragraph. But it has, golly, my daughter just came in and scared me, scared the mess out of me. Just a little bit, okay? <laughs> okay, please get her up. 
Okay. Oh my goodness, Chloe scared me. <laughs> Joshua, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Ephraim, is first mentioned in Exodus 17, when he was chosen by Moses to fight the Am Amalekites, whom he defeated in a brilliant military victory. He was placed in charge of, a, of the tent of meeting and was a member of the tribal representative sent to survey the land of Canaan. Later, he was appointed by God to su succeed Moses in Israel's commander, as Israel's commander-in-chief. Joshua eventually led the Israelites across the Jordan River into the Promised Land and directed the Israelites' capture of Jericho. He is remembered especially for his final ad address to the Israelites in which he challenged them to serve God faithfully, concluding with the memorable words, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. <laughs> All right. Well, that's funny. Chloe got me this morning. Uh, I hope I didn't curse. I don't think I did. <laughs> but anyway. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So y'all have an awesome day. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee and the Word. God bless. Bye-bye.